Dr. Mohammed, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and um, your thinking around how we close achievement gaps in Wisconsin, how we build positive culture. Um, let's just begin with a really basic um, overview of how do you define a positive school culture? Well, I'll even go beyond my definition and one that's <clears throat> universally accepted by Dr. Kent Peterson that a healthy school culture is a place that has an egalitarian belief system, starts with our philosophies about our practice, and that is that all students can and will be successful. And what's interesting about that, it doesn't even mean you know how to do it yet. It just means that you're committed to that objective. And that objective guides every policy, every practice, every procedure of the organization. With those two foundational pieces, we'll figure out what to do. But cultivating those two levels, the philosophical, as well as a willingness to change and challenge our practices in alignment with that philosophy produces a healthy environment. Okay. One of the things that we sense a lot is that people use the term culture and climate interchangeably. Mm -hmm. what, what for you is the difference? Um, they're not synonymous. Um, both are important, but I like to make the case that culture is much more impactful and much more important. I like to summarize it in very simple terms. The climate is how we feel, and culture is how we practice, how we behave. Now, I'd love to have an environment where people felt good about themselves, were happy and productive, but I'd rather have, if I had that choice between the two, I'm gonna choose changing our behavior more than changing our attitude, how we feel. So I'd rather have a group of semi-happy people that were productive than happy, unproductive people. And the state of Maryland, about three years ago, did a huge climate survey throughout the entire state and found that some of the schools in Maryland that had some of the highest climate results had some of the worst results. Mm -hmm. So culture is about interrupting norms of practice, beliefs, theories, practices, where climate is really just addressing how people feel. So I can make you happy and you can be unproductive simultaneously. Culture is about manipulating those habits, those beliefs, those attitudes, those dispositions to be aligned with the objective of learning for all. So in theory, theoretically, it would be possible to have a positive climate but a toxic culture. Absolutely. What would that look like? A group of people who are happy with status quo and they're focused on their relationships as adults. Mm. Do I like the principal? Does the principal like me? Do I like my teammates? Do my teammates like me? But we could be very unproductive, mm -hmm. but we like each other. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable. People stick around for years. We have staff outings. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it doesn't interfere with your ability to challenge your practice and your work as it pertains to affecting children, that's change of culture. Okay, thank you. So he said that the biggest impact is uh, student is school culture, and that's mm -hmm. what we want to see. So what um, relationship or what correlation do you have between school culture and student achievement? Oh, it's highly correlated. Um, in John Hattie's large visible learning meta-meta analysis and he, his isolation of 252 variables and studying their impact on student learning using the Cones D standard deviation model, he measured each one of their impacts against student learning. And the top three are all cultural. The teacher's perception of the probability of student success, collective teacher efficacy, and student self-efficacy are the three most impactful factors in student learning. So it'd be foolish to focus on the pedagogical strategies that he identified as highly impactful and ignore the frames of mind and the culture necessary for those practices to be highly impactful. He said collective teacher efficacy is the foundation of it all. So a highly impactful strategy like formative assessment at an effect size of 0.9. It's about two years worth of student growth. He said that 0.9 is conditional that is actually being applied in an environment of collective teacher efficacy. So in an environment where there's low teacher efficacy, you can use common formative assessment and it won't have nearly impact. It doesn't, all those strategies happen within a context. So the context in which you use strategy is actually more important than the strategy itself. 